Hello everyone and welcome to week number six. First off, um, a small apology. It turned out that creating lectures in a compulsory module from scratch is quite difficult and um, as we probably should have expected we came across a few obstacles which caused the delays. Nevertheless we are very much keen on being back on schedule um, next week so that the lecture can come out on time on Wednesday. This week we will focus on something called a power series. So we are going to take the series which we are already familiar with and we will see how they behave if we plug in a variable into the series. And we will then use this to derive a few uh, very important functions such as the exponential and the trigonometric functions. Here in the first chapter we will talk about the power series in general and then afterwards we will try to familiarize you with the exponential functions and the trigonometric functions. So in particular in this um, presentation I will introduce you to the concept of a power series and I will show you how a series with a variable can also make up for a rather unusual seeming definition of a function which is not explicit. And then by the end of the lecture, um, as so often in mathematics, um, surprise E, su surprise Euler's number will pop up. All right, so let's cut to the chase. Here I've written out for you the geometric series as we already know it. We have x to the power of k and then we sum up k from 0 to infinity. And we know if this is for example a half then it converges towards 2 and if it's 1 or greater than 1 it diverges and the final value is multiplied by our constant a0. And um, this is fairly usual stuff. But now the question is in our sequence, in our geometric sequence, what if we replace a zero with an actual sequence? So imagine a zero gets multiplied with every single value of x to the power of k. But what if every single value of x to the power of k, every single term, gets multiplied with a different number? So imagine the sequence which multiplies x to the power of k is not just a constant number, but any sequence, then what happens? And this is kind of the motivation that we're going in here with. We try to imagine having a series and then changing a zero out with a sequence of complex properties. And then we're going to see what happens. So here we have the formal definition. We just swapped out a zero with c depending on k and given the sequence c this expression is called the power series of c. And now um, this raises a few interesting questions. For example if c wasn't a sequence which may converge or diverge, we don't know, if it was just a constant number we knew that the series was converging if the absolute value of x was smaller than 1. But what, what about now? Like, when, when does it converge now? Does it converge at all? And if it does, is it a function or is it not? And if it's a function, does it have usual properties of a function? Is it continuous? And so on. So these are all questions that we can ask. And we will now um, look into it in more detail and try to answer those questions. So first off, the questions, is it a function? And how does it behave if it is one? And um, the point is, we are not really going to prove it because the proofs of most of these statement statements here are rather difficult. So um, we will just gonna memorize that a power series is a well-defined function because um, imagine any sequence c and then any given value of x then our power series either converges or it diverges 
and if it converges, then it maps a value x onto another value in the real numbers. Or if it diverges, it just has no value. This would mean that our, then our function definitely is not bijective, but it still is a function. So, um, makes sense, right? A function is just a mapping of a domain onto a codomain, and every single value of x is mapped onto something, either a real number or it's undefined. Question is just how does this function behave? And therefore we have um, a pretty neat theorem. So the point is, if we take any x within the real numbers, like any fixed x, let's say for example, one, and um, then we can show that if the series converges for this x, there is an upper bound which is either equal to x or greater than um, x such that the series converges for all x within that bound. If by any chance we pick the largest possible x such that our series converges, then this is our upper bound, maybe there is an even higher upper bound. But anything below x0 definitely converges. And um, if the if uh, we have such a x that our series converges, we know that the interval of convergence creates a continuous function of x. So we know that um, taking some x for which our function converges and then taking some a bit smaller x will create a continuous function of um, our power series. So there is no possible way that we get crazy jumps into our limit values, but we get a continuous function. The trivial example of this would just be the case for the geometric series. You remember in a geometric series, our sequence C is just a constant number. And in that case, if our sequence C is just a constant number, then our upper bound, so to say, is 1. And our series only converges if we are smaller than 1, but then it converges towards 1 over 1 minus x. And 1 over 1 minus x is just a continuous, well-defined function over the interval from minus 1 to 1. So um, this would be one example. And now um, on the next slide, we're going to look into an another one. So for example, for our example, we're going to use the sequence one over faculty of n. This example is chosen quite deliberately because it will lead us to something very useful, but in and of itself, there is no specific reason to use this example. We could use any other sequence to illustrate what we're going to try uh, try to express in um, this little example. So um, the question here is, uh, what do we want to find out? So we want to find out if there is any x such that our function is convergent. Because if there is one x, we know that there is at least some interval for which um, we get a continuous function. So in order to do so, we can just um, plug in any x into our power series and see if we get anything out of it. If we don't, then we can maybe choose another x and um, we may be faced with some difficult problems. But if we converge, then we know that the series in general converges and that um, we get a continuous function for some interval. Let's just assume x to be 1. Maybe it will lead us somewhere. If we plug this into our power series, we get um, for x1, so 1 to the power of k, and our sequence is 1 over faculty of k. So this just simplifies to the sum from 0 to infinity of 1 over faculty of k. 
And now question is, does this have a limit? Is it divergent? Um, we can pretty simply show that this has a limit just by um, courtesy of estimating it by the geometric series. The geometric series, as you remember, is a conversion series. And if we just take the geometric series with an R value of a half, then we see that for um, any term in the series greater than k, um, 1 over 2 to the power of k is larger than 1 over the faculty of k, um, which means that our geometric series is bounding the faculty series from above and since it itself is converging it means that the faculty series also has to converge um so we know okay for x equals one our power series converges but this of course backs the next question or it actually backs two further questions the first one being to what does it converge and the second question being does it converge for all x or just for x less or equal to one so let's just do a hands-on example in order to figure out to what it converges. Um, if it converges, this means that adding an infinite amount of terms will yield our um, limit. Um, and in order to figure it out, we can just by hand calculate approximately infinite many, infinitely many terms. And with approximately infinitely many, I mean like six or seven. So um, let's start with two. We start with k equals zero and go to one. So we get one over faculty of zero, which is one, plus one over faculty of one, which is also one. So we get two. Um, so far, so easy. Now, um, the next term is one over faculty of two. This is a half. We put this on top of the previous term. We get 2.5. All right, nothing, nothing special so far. So we take that and add another term, which is one over faculty of three. So we get 2.66. And you might already see where this is going. Um, I have a few more hints for you. If we add a fourth term, this already adds up to 2.70833. And this might already make alarm bells ring. Um, at this point, it still has a um, clearly repeating decimal expression, but it gets more and more obvious with every further term we add. So here's the fifth term. And with fifth term, we get 2.716. And now we already have two decimal digits of the number we're going for. And if you still couldn't guess it, here is the sixth term, which makes for 2.718055. And well, if you couldn't guess it so far, then I guess uh, I can't help you out. It's converging towards E, towards Euler's number, 2.718055 and so on and so forth. Um, of course, with every single number we add here, we get more and more precise, but the limit of the series is actually E, Euler's number. Now we have seen that the series that we're currently looking at, um, also called the exponential series, has a value for x equals 1 and the value is E. And we also have seen that now for any value between negative 1 and 1, the series has to converge and it yields a continuous function. And now the question is, well, what if we take any value of x? We know that if we take another value of x, which is not in this interval, for the geometric series, it will cause divergence. Um, here in this case, if we take a value of x, which is greater than one, the series will still converge. It will in fact converge for any value of x. And we will not prove this rigorously, but um, I would like to point out the general idea of the proof, uh, which is if we, you look at the power series underlying um, the exponential series, 
you see that you get one term which is x to the power of k and one term which is divided by the faculty of k. So you get one term which rises exponentially and you get one term which um, well falls by um, the speed of the faculty function. And we know that the faculty function gets bigger quicker than the um, exponential function. So um, this means that if we take an x which gets bigger and bigger, of course x to the power of k gets bigger and bigger, but at some point when k gets very large and k goes infinity, at some point, regardless of what x is, the faculty of k will be larger than um, x to the power of k. And intuitively this is the reason why the series will always converge. Um, nevertheless, we're not going to prove this, but um, you can memorize um, for any for any value the, um, this power series converges. And as it converges, it defines a function, a continuous function, which is called um, the exponent, uh, which is later called the um, exponential function. Um, right now, we will call this the exponential series. Um, denoted as x of x. Um, it's a well-defined function and it's continuous for all real values and commonly we denote it as e to the power of x. Of course e to the power of x is defined as something else. It's defined as e raised to the variable power of x and we will show in the next chapter that these two definitions are actually synonymous. Now a good question you might ask is what are we doing this for? Obviously, we know what an exponential function is. We know what 2 to the power of x is. We know what e to the power of x is. What is this fuzz about power series all about? The point about power series is that we express everything as an infinite number of um, polynomials or monomes, so to say. So we get um, an infinite number of um, x to a fixed power. And the difficult part of dealing with a function usually is that it is a complicated function which is not well behaved and difficult to deal with. And polynomial functions are notoriously easy to deal with. And here we kind of translate a problem into well, being infinity. So um, initially we have this function called the exponential function, which we have no idea about and we don't know how to argue about it. Um, instead, we express it as a polynomial and we get all the benefits of the good behavior of polynomials for the trade-off that we have an infinite degree. So we get an infinite number of terms and that is some stuff we have to deal with. But in general, this is very con convenient, especially when we're talking about calculus. So continuity, differentiation, integration, um, polynomials give us exceptionally easy times um, dealing with such problems. So in future, when we talk about differentiation, integration of um, the exponential function, oftentimes you will see that we will express the exponential function as its exponential series and then instead of arguing for e to the power of x we will be arguing over polynomials. So quick before the end I have a small task for you. I would ask you to um, post the video, um, take a pen, some paper and try to solve the following exercise. Um, the exercise is what is the derivative of x of x. So what's the derivative of the exponential series? As someone who has probably taken um, a Abitur or A level or something similar in mathematics, you probably already know the answer, but I'm not asking you to give me the answer, but to prove it. So um, a hint I would give is to do the very same thing I just announced. Take the exponential series, write out the first few terms of the series, and see what happens if you differentiate them. And this might lead you directly to the solution. Just take your time, don't stress out. 
Um, I will now, on the next slide, um, discuss the takeaways from the lecture. And quite in the end, we will discuss the solution to this exercise. We saw in the lecture that a power series, in a sense, is a generalization of a normal series by replacing the initial value of a series with a sequence and thus yielding a power series. Um, this is something which can be quite handy in mathematics in order to express functions in a backhanded kind of manner with the intent of giving us better behaved properties. And um, even though the formal aspect of proving stuff like convergence, continuity, and differentiability is um, difficult, assuming some theorems which have been proven by famous mathematicians, we know that once we have shown convergence, um, we know about a function being continuous and differentiable. And the most famous and important example for such a power series is the exponential series, which has the important property that it derives to itself. Um, we will go over more properties in the next chapter, but these are the important basics which make up a power series. Hey, big props for sticking with me till the very end. Now, I hope you spent some time on the exercise and managed to came up with a solution. But in case you didn't, or in case you want to check it, here is a um, form example of the solution. So we want to find out what the derivative of the exponential series is. So we just express the exponential series in its infinite series form. So we write out zero to infinity x to the power of k divided by faculty of k. And thus we get one plus x divided by faculty of one plus x squared divided by faculty of two and so on up until the infinity and everything there gets um, differentiated. Now we know that if we have differentiable functions which are added and then differentiated, we can differentiate every single one separately. We learned this in the lecture um, introduction to different, uh, differentiation and calculus. So we know that this translates to the derivative of one plus the derivative of x plus the derivative of x squared divided by faculty of two and so on. So what do we get here? We get zero plus one plus two x divided by faculty of two plus three x squared divided by faculty of three and so on. So um, what happens here? We divide a lot of polynomials. And what happens with polynomials? Well, when we derive them, we reduce their power by one, and then we multiply them by the initial power. Point now is that we also divide everything here by the faculty of k. And although this doesn't change, as factors don't change when you um, derive, we are multiplying always by the highest term of the faculty. And since, for example, faculty of 3 is 1 times 2 times 3, if we just multiply this by 3, well, the threes cancel out and we just get faculty of two. So here the new factor of the derivative and the highest term of the faculty, they just cancel out. So what do we get? We get zero plus one plus x plus x squared divided by faculty of two and so on. So we get the exact same series as before, just pushed back by one term. but since the entire thing is infinite, so we get infinitely many terms, every term is still represented. Thus, the derivative of x plus x is just x plus x itself. Alright, thank you for listening, and see you in the next chapter.